The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company. All right, team, let's huddle up. Listen up, let's get some focus. It's good color on you. All right, Mr. Raymond retired. Okay, I'm your new coach, so uh, are there any questions? Yeah. Okay, good. So according to this thing here, you guys are scheduled to uh, run the 400 meters today, all right? Okay, so let's get in the blocks. Let's block it up. Uh, coach. Yeah. These blocks aren't right. What are you talking about? These blocks need to be staggered. Yeah, because of the curve. Huh? Because of the curve. The curve, yeah. Right. Okay, you guys get on that. I'm gonna go get my calves massaged. Fourth figure, put your brain in the game. If you've ever watched a race 400 meters or more, you've probably noticed that the starting blocks are not all in a line. They stagger them, right? Whew, that seems strange at first, right? Wouldn't you want all the runners to start at the same place? Obviously, this circle has the same curve here on the inside as it does out here on the outside. But the distance around the inside isn't nearly as long as the distance on the outside. Even though all the lanes have the same curve, the runner here in lane eight is running farther than the runner in lane four and even farther than the runner in lane one. To make it a fair race, they have to equivalize the distance, like equivalent, like equal. So do you know how to do it? No. But what if you're the one that's got to set up the starting blocks? Jeremy Warner capped one of the most memorable seasons in the history of Baylor track and field by winning the gold medal in the 400 meters at the 2004 Athens Olympics. He followed that up two days later by winning another gold in the 4 by 400 meter relay. The triumphs continued in 2005 when he won yet another gold medal at the outdoor championships in Helsinki, Finland. I think it's safe to say that Jeremy knows a thing or two about running fast around the curves. So Jeremy, how much of an offset do the blocks need to make it a fair race? Well, not every track has the same exact curve on it, so really you gotta figure it out for each track. Okay, so how do we do that? The best way to do that is geometry. Geometry. Okay, we can do that. Let's start with the layout of the track and the race. A 400 meter track has two straightaways with curves at each end. The 400 goes once around the track and ends at a common finish line here. And you have to stay in your own lane for the whole race. Right, so let's figure out the difference in distance for each lane. Well, it's easy to see that the straightaways are the same length. But if we could unbend the curve, we would see right away that each outside lane is longer than the next. But how much longer? How do you measure a curve? So Jeremy, there must be some rules about the curves on a track. Well, the curves can't be too tight. You can risk injury running on a tight turn, so the best thing to do is have a little wider turns. Is there a specific measure for the curves? Well, there's gotta be a complete half circle at each end of the track with a minimum radius of 35 meters. All right, so it's the radius that's regulated. Right. What's a radius? If you wanted to draw a perfect circle, you would just spike a rope and walk around, keeping the rope taut like this. That's the definition of a circle. A set of all points in a plane equidistant from a point called the center. And a line that runs from the circle to the center is called a radius. The rope here is a radius. No matter where you go around the circle, the rope will always make a radius. If you have more than one radius, they're called radii. That's sort of fun to say, isn't it? Radii, radii. Now, if you were to extend the radius across the circle, that has a different, we call that the diameter. The rules say the curves must have a radius of 35 meters, but how can a curve have a radius? I thought that circles only had radii.
If we take a slice of a circle like this, we get a curve, right? That curve is called an arc. Now, if we were to extend the arc, it would make a circle with a radius of two meters. This arc has a radius of two meters. Arcs are defined by degrees or by radius. This track here has arcs, curves, with a radii of 35 meters. The rules allow for a bigger radii, but 35 meters is the smallest. There are also rules for how wide or narrow the lanes can be. These are one meter wide. So does this tell us how much longer the outside lanes are? No, but we do know that the next lane is going to have a longer radius. What? It has to. Look, the inside lane is here. Each lane out has a longer radius. Oh, right. It would have to. That means if we extended the arc, it would make a bigger circle and a longer distance around the circle. So um, what do we call the distance around a circle? The circumference. Right. If I walk the distance around a circle, I have walked its circumference. If we just figure out the circumference of the circle that these arcs make, it would tell us how much longer the distance is for each lane. So Jeremy, how do you find the circumference of a circle? Well, you just use the equation. Pi times diameter. OK, pi times diameter. What the heck is pi? Pi is one of the coolest things in all the math. Not that kind of pi. Pi is a number, a transcendental number. It's such a special number that it's got its own name, the Greek letter pi, P-I. It looks a little something like that. Some people figure out pi is a hobby. That's how cool it is. Oh. Okay, guys, let's figure out pi. First off, everyone, go find a circle and measure its circumference and its diameter. Okay, go! Go! Okay, guys, so uh, what have we got? The circumference of a car tire is 56 and a half inches, while its diameter is 18 inches. A soda can has a 12 and 3 quarter centimeter circumference and a 4 centimeter diameter. All right. I did the center circle of a soccer field. 78.5 feet circumference and 25 feet diameter. We did a manhole cover and got 100 and a half inches for circumference and 32 inches for diameter. OK, so looking at these numbers, can we see a relationship between circumference and diameter? Well, it seems like circumference is always a little more than three times the diameter. It does look that way. Let's try uh, dividing circumference by diameter and see what we get. Now, for the car tire, it's 3.13. How about some of the others? The soda can works out to be 3.18. OK. And the soccer field circle is 3.14. <laughs> a manhole cover comes out to 3.142. Fascinating. It's true. The circumference is always about three times the diameter. The last two we measured were exactly 3.14. Now, if we had measured every circle perfectly, we would find that they would all work out to exactly 3.14. 3.14 is the number we call pi. 3.14 is the ratio between diameter and circumference. 3.14 to 1. Like, if I have a circle with a diameter of 1 meter, then I know the circumference is 3.14. If the circle has a 2 meter diameter, then obviously the circumference is double 3.14, 6.28. So we've got pi the ratio and pi that you eat. Now, don't mix them up, because you can't solve for circumference with a cherry pie, and you can't eat a ratio. OK, the circumference is c equals 2 pi r. So you just plug the numbers into the equation, and then you get the circumference. Right, so that means circumference equals 3.14 times the diameter. So you doubled the radius 35 to 70 meters for diameter. Solving for c is as simple as multiplying. Our circumference is 219.8 meters. So what does that tell us? That's the circumference of a total circle. OK, but can we use that? Yeah, because each curve is a half circle, a semicircle. So if you put those two together, you get a complete circle. Right, and in the 400 meters, you go around both curves, so you're really running a full circle. But 219.8 meters is the, is the distance of the inside lane. 
the outside lane is just a little longer, so that's why you need to figure it out. All right, well, we can do that pretty easily. The lanes are one meter wide, so we just add one meter to our radius. 36 meters for lane two. Now, let's find the circumference just using the radius this time. C equals two pi radius. Two times pi is 6.28 times 36 meters, and we get 226.08 meters for lane two. That's 6.28 meters more than the runner in lane one. And that tells us that lane two starting block is 6.28 meters farther along the track from lane one's. So what about the rest of the lanes? Because the widths are equal, the radius are increased by one meter for each lane. Okay. And a one meter increase in radius is a two meter increase in diameter. And the race is a full circle, so two meter increase in diameter means 6.28 meters in circumference. The lanes are 6.28 meters longer. So you just move each starting block 6.28 meters in front of the next. Okay. Lane eight start is going to be 50 meters from lane one. All right, well there we have it. We have now equivalized the race. It's the same distance for each lane. How do they determine which lane you're going to start in when you run a race? Uh, in the Olympics, the top four times get to choose. They'll draw for lanes three, four, five, and six, and everybody, the other four will get one, two, seven, and eight. Would you rather have an inside lane or an outside lane? Or My preference is I'd rather have lane three or four because I'll have people behind me knowing me, pushing me, and I'll have people in front of me that I can keep an eye on and see where they're at during, throughout the race. Is there a lane you, don't, you definitely don't want to get? Lane one. Why is lane one the worst? You got to run a little more curve than everybody else. They're already on the straightaway, opening up their stride, and you're still working the turn, so it's a little difficult. If you were to tie a rope around the equator of the Earth, it would be approximately 24,000 miles long. Now, if you were to add that same 6.28 meters to the 24,000 miles, what would happen? Well, it would just make the rope uh, a tiny bit looser, like a millionth of a millimeter or something, right? Amazingly, adding just 6.28 meters to this 24,000 mile rope will put the rope one meter above the ground. Now, just like with the lanes of the track, increasing the circumference of any circle by 6.28 meters will add one meter to the radius. Okay, so what do we learn? That in a circle, all points are equal distance to the center. And that distance is called the radius. Across a circle is the diameter, and around a circle is the circumference. And we can use the equation C equals pi times diameter to find circumference. And pi is the ratio between circumference and diameter. Generally, we use the ratio 3.14. Works for me. So that's it. I'd like to thank Jeremy Warner and our students, Tom, Buddy, Stephanie, Kelly, and Julian, and the rest of the Horizon High School track team for helping us out today on ESPN Sports Figures, Running in Circuit. For over 10 years, ESPN has been proud to present the award-winning Sports Figures, and we want to thank all the athletes who have donated their time to help put your brain in the game. We hope you've enjoyed ESPN Sports Figures. Until next time, keep your brain in the game. I'm Brian Kenny. Thanks for watching. ESPN Sports Figures is presented commercial free for educators to tape and use in the classroom. For a free teacher's curriculum, to order the Sports Figures series, or lots of other fun stuff, visit our website at sportsfigures.espn.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Sports figures, put your brain in the game. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company.